Today, we're here to talk about VMware. VMware is an enterprise grade virtualization company with a suite of different apps and programs to help you get the most functionality out of virtualization, typically in an enterprise or business data center environment. But we're here to talk about setting up VMware at home. Let's get into that. First, a couple of things. What we're talking about here today is installing VMware on bare metal. Bare metal means just the computer. All of the raw resources, the CPU, RAM, storage, networking, all of that stuff, that's considered bare metal. VMware has a hypervisor which lives on the bare metal of your computer. Hypervisor is a very lightweight operating system that essentially virtualizes that physical layer of components out to be distributed in virtual machines on a virtual layer. Sarai, sarai. Phase one is gonna be map out a plan. So for this, we're gonna be using ESXi8. And ESXi is the hypervisor that VMware provides for free to anyone and everyone. All you gotta do is go to their website, vmware.com, create an account, a customer connect account specifically. So here at vmware.com, we can just go up to our search box and type ESXi. Uh, one of the first ones here is what is ESXi, bare metal hypervisor, yada yada. Kind of goes into it. We can go to download hypervisors here, and there we are. Um, see, I'm already, uh, yeah, I'm already logged in. You can go to license and download. You'll manually download the ISO from here. I've already got it downloaded, so I don't need to download it again. But after you're signed in and you say, yes, I want to download this, it will give you a license key. So just keep that in mind because we'll get to that a little bit later. Part of our mapping out a plan is to realize the limitations that you may have for your physical host, whether it's a server or a workstation or whatever, processor limitations, storage or RAM limitations based on what you're using. I have links to all of these documents down in the description underneath that like button. So you'll want to look into that and make sure that the equipment that you have is compatible with VMware. Typically it is compatible. Sometimes it's not supported. So if you have to reach out to them directly for support, they may say uh, tough cookies. That moves us on to phase two prep for installation. A couple things we're gonna need for this. We're gonna be installing ESXi directly onto the device. There's a couple of ways to do it. What we're gonna be doing today is using a USB flash drive, just a simple flash drive. I think anything bigger than eight gig is enough for what you need for VMware 8. There are other ways to install this like over the network. VMware makes a network installation tool. You know, if you've got a whole bunch of hosts that you wanna install this on, maybe you'll use something like that. But for us, one computer, two computers, we're just gonna stick to a flash drive. Something else we're gonna need, the VMware image, like I just showed you how and where to download that. We are also going to need an imaging application that's gonna burn that ISO onto our flash drive. And I recommend Rufus. I've used Etcher in the past, Belina Etcher, and I had mixed results. So just download Rufus, it's free. Just save yourself the headache. Now we'll flash the image onto the USB drive. We can see this one's already been completed that way, but we're gonna pretend like it's not. We will search for our, let me guess, I didn't have it downloaded anymore. Oh, I did, where did I put it though? I must have deleted it. All right, I guess I gotta delete, uh, download it again. We can come back to Rufus. We're gonna select our ISO. All this stays the same, name it whatever you want. You could just leave it default, FAT32 and hit start gonna say all your data on your USB is about to be destroyed. If that's okay with you, click okay. Now it's gonna go through, create that bootable flash drive so that we can install it on our host. Essentially, you'll need to hook up a keyboard and monitor to your physical host where you'll be installing VMware. And you're not gonna need a mouse. There's no mouse movements on the installation. It all goes through the keyboard. I would also recommend plugging your USB drive directly into one of the motherboard USB ports and not one that's like on the case, just to help alleviate any type of issues that you might have because you know it's a direct connection. Go ahead and boot that bad boy up. You'll wanna hit whatever key is gonna bring you to a BIOS boot or a boot screen for the motherboard, yeah. So we have, so depending on your motherboard, you'll wanna go through and essentially swap this around so that um, USB is the priority boot order, save and exit. 
Now, when we come back up, it should boot directly into the USB drive. I shouldn't have to touch anything. And the USB drive has VMware installation media, so that's what we're gonna do. Look at that. In fact, we're not even gonna touch anything. We're gonna let it automatically boot in five, four, three, two, one, kapow. All right, now the boring part. It's gonna go through and do this for maybe, depending on your system, you know, 10 minutes or so. Still installing when you get to this screen. I'm leaving a network cable plugged in. My network is set up with DHCP, so as soon as a new device comes on the network, it gets automatically assigned an IP address. Depending on your network, that may be different. You'll probably have a different IP scheme than I do. You can go through and set up a static IP address as well after this setup is completed. But that IP address is gonna get you into the ESXi host manager. So that's how you'll be managing your VMs if you're not using a vCenter server or a vSphere agent. This is also the free way to do things, so that's what we're gonna do. Welcome to ESXi 8.0.1. So this is your installer menu. Just gonna hit enter. Go ahead and read all the terms and conditions, and if you agree to them, hit F11 to accept. Scanning for available dev devices. This may take a few seconds or a few minutes, depending on your host. So we can see we've got an ATA device or SATA device. This is my Samsung, uh, I think it's a 500 gig. Yeah, 500 gig uh, Evo 850. Uh, my NVMe drive, which is a terabyte, and then the USB drive, which is where this is actually running from currently. We can see that there's a little asterisk next to the NVMe drive because it states it contains a VMFS partition already, which means I already installed VMware on this drive on this machine previously. We're gonna be overriding that today. We'll select the drive we want. Yours probably won't have this because you probably don't have VMware already installed, but that's just what that means. So we're gonna hit enter, gathering information. If you don't have VMware installed, it'll, it'll give you an option to install ESXi. But because I already have it in place, I'm going to overwrite the existing VMFS data store or the footprint that's already on the drive. Check that box and we're gonna hit enter, US default create your root password so can be between seven and 40 characters needs an uppercase a lowercase a special character and a number three out of the four of those parameters oh and it can't contain your username or any dictionary words so good luck with that okay confirm install f11 to install now it's installing and now we wait two hours later and we're finished so next we're going to pull out our usb drive or cd drive or whatever media you use to install vmware onto your physical host and then we're going to enter to reboot server shutting down and we'll reboot now it's going to auto boot in we'll have a couple of questions we have to answer so just stay logged into your direct console which is you know, plugged in directly to the machine you're installing this on with your keyboard and your monitor. And we're ready. Uh, we can see that DHCP has gone ahead and assigned an IP address to our physical host. So you could get into the customization menu with the F2 button. From here, you can scroll down and change your password, configure management network. So by default, we can see this is set up with DHCP since I was already plugged in. If you do need to configure it, this is where you would do it. Just enter, hit enter, go in, change your IPv4 if you want to, um, set up a static IP address, whatever you want to do there. You can go down to restart management network, test management network, network restore options, so on and so forth. So there's not a whole whole lot that we're going to do direct console wise, but we have our IP address. So now we can go directly to a browser, access this and log in, manage everything from the browser from now on for the most part. We were 192.168.254.2. You'll probably get this on your first connection as well. Just go through, um, show advanced and uh, move forward anyway. Root and your super secret password. There we go. Now we're logged in for the first time. I am going to unclick the join experience improvement program. Um, you do you, whatever you wanna do. So we've signed into VMware for the first time. That brings us to phase three, setting up your environment. 
So this step pretty much concludes what I wanted to go over in this video. We can see we're in our local host. We're using the ESXi host client. Um, which is different than the vSphere client and a vCenter server, which are also two ways for you to manage a VMware environment. But like I said before, we're doing this on the free, we're doing this on local equipment, not data center servers and things. What we did today is more than enough for what we're trying to accomplish here. A few things you'll want to do here is Take a look that you are currently using ESXi in evaluation mode. This license will expire in, in 60 days. Keep that in mind. The evaluation mode is essentially uh, vSphere Essentials Plus licensing, I think. So you're going to get a lot of those extra features like the vMotion and vSAN and things like that that you have to pay for with a full VMware license. Once you actually apply your license to it, your free license, a lot of those features are gonna go away. So be careful what you're doing out here. If you go through and set all this up before you actually put in your free license, you may lose some functionality along the way. Just food for thought there. So there we are. We've installed ESXi, the free hypervisor from VMware on our computer at home. Popping up on the screen here shortly, there should be a place where you can click to go to the next video in this series. If you found any of this useful, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel and it helps with the algorithm. Make sure you subscribe to see more videos like this. And of course, thanks for watching.